What's happening, y'all? Today, I've got a, another new firearm to talk about. And this is the Fostech Origin 12. I'm sure most of you guys already knew that. Because it's got a very unique design. As I'm sure most of you have already figured out. <clears throat> but I've seen a lot of great videos on this thing being fired, on reviewing basically its cycle rate, um, and just kind of reviewing the overall functionality. But I haven't really seen much in the way of, um, you know, the build quality and what to expect as an owner when you first pick this thing up. So I kind of wanted to base this review on that. Just because uh, I was looking for uh, a video out there before I purchased this thing. And... Um, I didn't even find one where somebody's breaking it down for um, just, you know, cleaning and uh, to do just a quick field strip and how to do that. So, um, anyways, wanted to kind of bring you guys something a little bit different than what's already out there. So, um, this is the full length barrel version of the um, Fostec Origin 12. This is the hard black version. Um, and... It is uh, one of the newer models, so this is uh, this is a model that was built in 2019. Um, I'm taking this video in 2020, so um, depending on the little things that they've changed over the years, this may change. This configuration may change again uh, over the next couple of years or whenever you watch this video. But for right now, as of the 2019 builds, this is kind of what you can expect. So um, let's start with some of the quick little changes I can note um, from what I've seen on some of the older models. So one of them being that they no longer come with the diamond head sights and instead they come with these fab defense um, polymer sights. They're pretty nice. Uh, I would say that they're comparable to like the Magpul M bus except they don't have like the quick spring loaded uh, buttons that you can press to lift them but uh, they're solid like uh, they're very positive when you're putting them uh, up and down it does not feel like you know playing around with them or, or the gun's uh, recoil is going to cause them to to uh, flex at all or move while uh, you're using them so they're pretty nice and there's the rear sight right there and it does have an adjustable See here. an adjustable aperture so you have the smaller people or you got the larger one usually best to go with the larger one unless you're going really long range which i don't know why really you would do that with a shotgun but to each their own um <clears throat> i've placed a fab defense um 45 or uh it's it's a multiple position rotating um, or folding grip over here on the side so it's got it's got this little button here at the front and you can push that in and lock it into several different positions and you're also seeing a Magpul um, AFG so you're like why the hell do you need both well that's because it's uh, you know from this position when you're using one of these um, uh, one of these standard proprietary magazines, the stick magazines, it's easy enough to get your hand under here and uh, you have a nice grip on the, on the uh, shotgun. However, when you're using this bad boy right here, this 30 round drum sticks out an awful lot and it's hard to get a grip underneath the gun so it's best to have it to the side. So anyways, we'll talk about this too because that's a pretty badass piece of uh, machinery all on its own but we'll talk about that a little later so um so here is what i can tell you about the the, uh, the build quality so this grip also by fab defense is phenomenal it's got these nice little spikes over here it's all rubber so it kind of feels like if you're familiar with hoe grips and how they feel um then this will be very close to home uh when you first put your your uh, hand around it so very nice 
grip. Uh, it's not going anywhere. It's it's in there um, when you're when you're grasping it, and uh, you do not feel it slipping at all, which is important because this thing uh, weighs a pretty good chunk, and um, with the recoil, you want a sturdy grip that uh, you know you could rely on. So, good choice for this grip. Um, the lower over here is uh, stamped steel, and it definitely feels super thick. Um, I haven't really taken a look inside of this thing yet to see exactly how thick, if this is milled, um, or if it's more like an AK that's stamped, um, but it feels a little bit more solid than what you'd normally get with a, um, a lower quality AK. So, uh, the controls, all of them are like oversized, super industrial feeling and looking. Um, and all of them feel like I, you can drop a bomb on this thing and it'll likely still fun function. I mean, that's kind of the overall, the impression that you get when you initially hold this gun. And here you can see, um, this is actually etched into the metal here. So this whole thing is kind of uh, concave and it's got the panted that's uh, engraved even further down. So like really nice touches and that kind of tells me that this thing is probably milled because that it's a thick piece of steel um this is like the polymer and this polymer feels a little different from some of the polymer that i'm used to um you know if you think like a tavor uh or you know another type of of uh, rifle that has a lot of polymer on the outside you kind of feel like this rough texture and this is really smooth it's almost like a fiberglass um i bet you anything that this is fiberglass reinforced because it just kind of has that look and if you look really deep into it you'll kind of see that um so it's got this smooth texture and it feels very 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 solid like it's it's hard to explain but it feels almost like aluminum it's like the only thing that's keeping this from really feeling like aluminum is that it's not cold to the touch when you uh, when you put your hands on it. So really nice. Um, the the folding stock over here and the adapter here. This is this is metal. It feels like um, feels like aluminum, but it is pretty thick and it's got like a rough texture. It's not very smooth, which I like. Again, it's it's got this very industrial look about it. Everything is like, it's bulky. You know, the, the controls are very like, they're very stiff. It's just, it feels like something that can take punishment. Um, the stock, obviously like the minimalist stock, um, pretty popular uh, overall for like anything with an AR tube. Um, these have been around for a while, but sorry, got to use my second hand for this again, <laughs> all the, uh, operations of the, on this thing are, it's like you have to deliberately do something. You can't accidentally flip a switch on this thing because everything is just kind of, you know, again, very, very industrial, very like just kind of oversized controls that that uh, you really have to put some effort into pressing these these buttons and levers and whatnot. And I love that. I love that about this thing. It just feels like feels like a bunch of guys at a uh, um, at like a you know oil refinery were thinking to themselves, hmm, if we needed a gun that could withstand all the crap that we endure over here and all the heat. Or like a place that manufactures metal and steel. You know, it's just like that. Like, that's what I think of when I think of this thing. It's just crazy. The fluted barrel. Really nice touch. You could tell high quality. Um, the machining is excellent. It's just like... This is a, um, a hog's tooth uh, muzzle brake that I put on there. 
Um, so that doesn't normally come with the with the uh, shotgun, but still, the bolt carrier being skeletonized, but like kind of looking at the machining and the tooling on this, it's just freaking flawless. Um, I just can't say enough about how impressed I am with the overall build quality. I can tell where all the money goes into this thing. So these are not cheap. Um, these go for about 2,700 bucks, uh, with a five round mag and that's all you get. So that's steep. I mean, you're talking scar money for a shotgun, albeit it's a semi-auto shotgun, but still, um, you know, you look at a setup like this and you're talking 500 bucks for a 30 round drum. Um, you're talking, you know, uh, for, for stuff that you would need if you're going to incorporate the drum, I, I would definitely say that you need some sort of a grip um, if you're going to have a drum on this thing. And I, like I said, ideally you can't really stick anything underneath it and expect it's going to be enough unless you don't mind your arm uh, hitting this drum as it's rotating, which I didn't want. So, you know, little things like that. You're going to be investing a, a good chunk of change and this thing so um the front end here is all again that fiberglass reinforced polymer um the actual rails that come on the front side here they feel to me like they are polymer i believe they are polymer the top rail is definitely aluminum um but these rails are polymer and that goes the same for the bottom rail. So a lot of polymer, but you can see, if you look around the charging handle, that right underneath that polymer, you've got more aluminum. Or steel. This could actually be steel. Nah, I think it's aluminum. But anyways, you can tell, like underneath this thing, is a crap ton of aluminum. And you can feel it in the heft of this thing. And this polymer is not light either. Um, it's just super, super sturdy. Uh, another upgrade that I've I've noticed with uh, with these newer models is that this little gas adjustment knob has been shortened because the old one used to stick out a little bit further um, and used to have lo like longer fins basically for you to hold on to. But the new one still has the slot so that you can put in the uh, shotgun shell in order to use it as a wrench if it gets hot or gummed up. But shortening it kind of gives it a, a nicer look, in my opinion, than the longer fins kind of sticking out there. And outside of that, the top here is polymer. Again, it's that same fiberglass reinforced polymer. Um, and it, again, it seems like it's sitting right outside of a aluminum shell. Obviously this is where the action is, and this is where all of the, uh, wear and tear takes place. So I would doubt very much that all they would have covering this thing is just the, uh, polymer. So my guess is that underneath this polymer is another layer of aluminum i'm trying to look here right now to kind of gauge that but maybe not maybe this top rail is just polymer because i'm not seeing any metal on the interior but this definitely has metal on the interior um and then again you get more of that milled out steel over here that's got the uh, usa stamped in there so that's pretty damn cool the dust dust covers that same reinforced polymer really thick really nice quality um and then the magwell it's like really just ridiculous it's it's really bulky and uh i love it i just love everything about it I, so <clears throat> overall i think like what i'm trying to get at here is people look at a shotgun that's worth almost three thousand dollars and they're like you got to be kidding me that's ridiculous where the hell is that money coming from um 
Or what is that money buying you? Because ultimately it's just a shotgun. And on top of that, it's on an AK platform, right? It's a Saiga uh, platform. This is a Saiga type of platform, but it is a very, very different. And the quality and the fit and finish and the heft and the bulkiness and the industrial look, the industrial controls, just everything on this thing just being like robust. It's just so fucking awesome. I can't say enough good things about how this thing feels. And you know, right when you hold it, you know it's worth every damn penny. And that it costs a lot to manufacture. Because I'm telling you, there's nothing cheap about this thing. Even the magazines. These magazines, they are all polymer. Um, I mean, they've got the, uh, the steel feed lips up here. But this is all polymer. And I cannot flex this damn thing. And it is thick and it is solid and it is heavy. And this is only a five rounder. It is heavy. It probably weighs at least half a pound. So everything on here is just, again, super high quality. And that goes for this thing too. So this is Fostex 30 round drum. It is all aluminum construction. Um... I mean, like everything on here, again, same same sort of uh, pattern here. Everything kind of looking industrial, robust. Like, look at that spring. It's just super, super fat. And uh, all the little hex screws and everything here. I mean, just like, this thing is huge. It's heavy. It probably weighs, I mean, right now it's loaded. But this thing unloaded probably weighed... A good four pounds and now that it's loaded it's probably a good five and a half or so so anyways i i'm telling you i know it's kind of stupid to spend that kind of money on a shotgun albeit it's the world's fastest cycling shotgun um that's not automatic so i know there's a lot of debate between this and the aa12 I've held the AA-12, and I can tell you right now, this thing feels way more uh, high quality than the AA-12. And um, if you've got a fast enough trigger finger, you can likely match, if not exceed, the AA-12's fire rate. So, that's pretty freaking nuts. That's nuts. That is nuts. And the fact that it's got an infinite um, gas adjustment uh, knob over here. That you can cycle birdshot, you can cycle all the cheap Walmart crap, you can cycle slugs, buck, whatever you want to cycle through this thing. Um, and not really have to change much, you know, except to, to tweak that little gas port right there just a little bit. And um, it'll eat it all up. That is pretty damn impressive. Pretty damn impressive. So anyways, um, just kind of wanted to give you guys... Like I said, a little bit of a heads up. All these buttons, by the way, are metal. Again, very robust, big, ridiculously big controls. <laughs> but all your fingers reach, which is awesome. So there's the mag release. And um, this is something I've noticed, too, uh, that they have changed. I don't know when they put this change into place, but they added some texturing to the outside of this lever. Um, I didn't see that there beforehand on the earlier model. So... Uh, some nice little tweaks that they've made uh, since the early models, but like I said, I I, I like the upgrade to the uh, to the Fab Defense sights. Uh, the diamond heads were obviously awesome as well. Um, I don't, you know, I think that these are pretty nice and they kind of fit the overall profile because a lot of what they're using here is from uh, Fab Defense, so it just it looks the part. It looks right with the uh, shotgun. And if you got the extra change left over, you know, fork it over to get one of these. Um, they're becoming increasingly rare to find. Um, I found this one on Brownell's website. And um, thankfully they hadn't hiked up the price because they know that they're, uh, even though they knew that there was a, a shortage on these. So you could still get it for 500 bucks. Uh, I think it was 540 shipped or something like that. So not too bad there. Um, they, Fostex still has the five, eight, and I think five, eight, and 
12 round magazines. Stick magazines, these are very high quality, not as expensive. So you can load up on those too. Um, I think they go for about 50 to $55 a piece. So not horrible. And um, yeah, I mean, if you haven't held one of these and if you're thinking about one um, and you're just kind of on the fence about spending that kind of money, trust me when I say try to find one, go hold it and just, uh, you know, figure out real quick for yourself that that money is going to a lot of quality and uh, it's well worth it. It is probably one of the highest quality guns I've ever held and um, I could tell right away that uh, it was worth the money. So if you got it, fork it out. If you don't, um, hey, you know, here's to hoping and dreaming that one day um, you can own one of these bad boys because like I said, in the shotgun world, there are only so many that are worthy of being crowned king, and this is definitely one of them. So let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thanks. See you next time.